worked on uh, Capitol Hill during the uh, financial crisis uh, and then started getting interested in what eventually became the Jobs Act. If you liked this video, click below. And if you want to see more videos like this, click subscribe and then remember to click the little bell icon so you get notifications. Enormous uh, concentration of power. Democracy, poverty reduction, and cryptocurrency. Are you sophisticated enough to um, invest in uh, securities? Bitcoin is actually a reversion to commodity money. Decentralized social networking. Hey everyone, welcome to Making Crypto Mainstream. I'm here with Sarah Hanks, who some of you may know and others would like an introduction. So Sarah, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and how you came to be in the crypto space? Okay, uh, well, I come from a very uh, traditional corporate and um, uh, securities law background for a um, couple of decades. I was a partner in one of the biggest law firms in the world. Um, worked on uh, Capitol Hill during the uh, financial crisis uh, and then started getting interested in what eventually became the Jobs Act. Um, and as the various bits of the Jobs Act were going through uh, Congress, uh, my co-founders and I looked at each other and said, hmm, uh, inexperienced small companies raising funds over the internet from retail investors what could go wrong with that, we thought. And um, we decided that there needed to be a trust layer uh, that could say, you know, whoever it is who's raising funds under these new, new exemptions from registration with the SEC, whoever it is, we're not saying if it's a good investment or not, but we can say that these guys are legit and uh, they are, uh, you know, what they're offering is legit. We're not saying if it's a, a good investment or not. Um, and then, so we started purely as a due diligence shop, uh, but because we were um, securities lawyers ourselves, people kept asking us securities law questions uh, and they would pay us in chocolate uh, and at the beginning. Um, and then we, so we looked at each other and said, yeah, you know, um, we do actually have law licenses. We could charge, you know, fiat currency for this uh, and, start, and started uh, CrowdCheck Law alongside CrowdCheck. You know, fast forward a few years, and now what we do is a wide range of legal disclosure, um, diligence, and compliance products in all of the uh, the various exemptions from SEC registration that were embodied by the Job Act. So, 506C regulation uh, CF regulation A, uh, and that of those of course are the things that crypto leapt onto when people realized that you know many of the instruments being offered in crypto were in fact securities. Um, they're like, okay, we need to comply now, so help us comply. The one thing that we don't do in this space, as you know, is we do not ever answer the question, is this a security or not? Um, our general uh, rule is come to us when you've decided that you have a securities law issue because this is what we do, but we're not telling you that you, you don't have securities. There are other people we know who do that. Very cool. Very cool. And I think, yeah, this whole space now with crypto, and I'm going to get back to the Jobs Act, but with crypto, I feel it has a very international character because, uh, you know, I think this, uh, it's good to put it in context. So, you know, in the 90s, uh, the web came out and it kind of disrupted that whole local magazine, newspaper type of publishing model and the local TV stations, the radio stations, cable channels, and it became very global. And so anyone could put their website on the internet. Anyone else can consume that easily and instantly online. So similarly today with people, you know, putting out new kind of smart contracts and ideas that we might talk about, um, it has this international character. And so people might someone in Texas might do something or someone in Singapore. And at the same time, people around the world are, trying to buy it or transfer it or sell it. And so, yeah, the United States is sort of one jurisdiction, which is a very important one. And, you know, with the Howey test, uh, it's not clear sometimes if something is a security or is not in this space. Um, but what I wanted to ask about one uh, exemption is regulation S, right? Mm -hmm. 
So I yeah. wanted to ask, what is your history with Regulation S? <laughs> I've heard from different people that you had a hand in writing it, so I'd love to hear about that. Uh, that's right. Um, I am I am like the mom of Regulation S, if you like. Um, and in fact, uh, the S is no... Um, uh, it is no coincidence. Um, people look at the, this and say, this is just a weird numbering system you all got here. <laughs> um, uh, but the, the way it came around is uh, what eventually, we, we realized at the SEC that there was a need to take all of the no action letters and pronouncements and things that we uh, put together over the years as to answering the question, when do you not have to look at US securities laws because what you're doing is outside the US. Uh, and there was just piles, I mean, a literal pile this high of uh, no action letters. Uh, and we took all of the principles in those no action letters and put them into a rule, which expanded into several rules, which then must have to be a, reg a regulation. And then in the, uh, the numbering system under the Securities Act uh, of 1933, the next regulation that would have uh, um, happened would have been Regulation G, but there was a Federal Reserve um, regulation G. So we couldn't use that. Then uh, the next one in line would have been regulation H. And my boss is like, no, that sounds like preparation H. That's weird. <laughs> uh, and uh, the next one would have been regulation I, which uh, sat, looks like regulation one. And we thought that would confuse everyone. And so the boss asked the general counsel, can I call this whatever I like? And they said, yes. And she's like, okay. Uh, we will call it Regulation S after Sarah and my deputy Sam, who had worked so 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 long on it. So that's the you know the weird background to the reg. But what it's for is to answer the question, which should be absolutely obvious: if you're doing something outside the United States, do you have to comply with U.S. securities laws? Uh, and um, the reason why it was needed at that time, and we're talking about the 80s, 90s, is the whole internationalization. You were talking about you know, international things. Um, previously, um, you know, the, uh, no, the US securities laws was very, very you know, xenophobic, very geographically focused. Section five of the Securities Act says, if you sell securities, you must register them with the SEC unless there is an exemption. Of course, the obvious answer is, well, what if I sell securities in Singapore? And the obvious answer is, well, of course that doesn't apply, but you needed a set of principles uh, to um, make it clear, when, when, what do we mean when we say outside the United States? Uh, and that's what Regulation S was supposed to do. And it was quite complicated, as you can see by the fact that, you know, the thing is uh, several, uh, several sections long trying to answer the question, what is outside the United States? That's right. So one of the things that's clearly outside the United States is when the buyer and the seller are both outside the United States, the offer is made outside the United States and the transaction happens outside the United States. So that one is pretty clear, I think. And that's, that's like- the Probably, <laughs> assuming that, you know, the transaction these <coughs> days, there might be a server involved in the United States. That luckily um, back in the eighties, that was a question we didn't have to answer. But yeah, if all of the parties are outside the United States and all the communications are outside the United States, then yep, definitely outside the United States. That's right. That's why at Singapore, uh, at Intercoin, after talking to you, we got a, a server that is hosted in Singapore, in Amazon's Singapore data center. Mm -hmm. So physically, the machine that is doing the offer or, you know, the we have a domain, global.intercoin.org, for example. If you want to see more videos like this, click subscribe, and then remember to click the little bell icon so you get notifications. Intercoin, making crypto mainstream.